Cairns, the last ball of the day to Russell. So a shortened day has ended with England being sent into bat by New Zealand. At the end of it, it's 146 for seven, and Adam Perori leaving the field. I'm sure he'll be very pleased with his day today. 146 for seven after one day's play. So at the end of the day, England after being sent into bat, 146 for seven, the top scorer Chris Lewis for 33 before he fell to that brilliant catch by Chris Cairns in the gully. England in early trouble, recovering just a little, 146 for seven after 59 overs on day one. Here's the New Zealand bowling figures, headlined by Chris Cairns, three for 34, two wickets for Willie Watson, one for Danny Morrison, and Murphy Sewer has taken his first test wicket. 46 for seven, the New Zealand bowlers very keen to polish off the England tail. Jack Russell and Derek Pringle to continue. Let's go to the action on day two at Eden Park. Lovely shot from Russell this time. A nice on drive. And a good sprawling save down there by Captain Martin Crow. It's a real commitment in the New Zealand field. Oh, this one's over the slips and away down for four runs. Damn near six. Edge and put down. Ken Rutherford. He had it and he lost it. Well, Chris Cairns was really cross about this. He's done his homework, his mental thought, worked out Jack Russell, then the catch comes. Straightforward catch in Test Match Cricket, that. I know they're not, no catch is easy, you might say, but in Test Match Cricket, you would call that uh, fairly straightforward. That is disappointing for Chris Cairns more than the, the fielder because he's worked it out, got his just reward, and the fielder's dropped it. He's got the wicket he was looking for. Perori has another catch. Five for Adam Perori. And Chris Cairns has his fourth wicket. Russell out. Caught Perori. Bold Cairns for 33. The breakthrough has been made. And England are 165. But now for eight. If we look at this replay, slightly quicker, Peter. A quicker ball. A little more bounce. Hurried on to Russell. Good line. And Perori did the rest. Good bowling by young Cairns. It worked out the way to perhaps get Russell out was to contain him and restrict him outside the off-stuck, and he did. 165 it is for eight. Philip de Freitas coming out to, to bat, the tenth of the English batsmen. And he's coming out to bat with Cairns picking up his fourth wicket, and here it is. The bat some distance away, and quite clearly a, an involuntary jerk from Russell, he knew Perori did too, Perori five catches Bob, great start for him well this is another interesting looking hook shot it's in the air and he's gone what a great catch Martin Crowe running back from mid on the ball over his head and he dived and took a superb catch that was a real gem of a catch. Those ones are boots when they're going away from you and you've got to turn around and take it over your shoulder. Uh, he kept his cool. He never lost faith with himself, kept his eye on the ball. And marvellous, and the, the great bit of luck he had, that having got it into his hands, uh, it didn't then hit, uh, fall down, get him on the elbows and come out. No, superb uh, work here by Martin Crow. Running back, the ball coming down over his shoulder, reaching, and he grabs hold of it. So... Chris Cairns has his fifth wicket. England lose another one, nine for 171. Well, there he is. He's gone for it. And he's got hold of it over the infield. And it, what was it? There's some uh, discussion down there. Did it reach the boundary for six on the full? I thought it, from the noise, it crashed full toss into the uh, advertising sign. I think everyone's a bit bemused at the moment. But it was and an amazing stroke. Yes, oh, it's six. six. Well, it did hit the sign on the full. So six runs to Derek Pringle. Here it is again. Yes, he swung it very high. It went high. We lost it for a moment. But it certainly cleared the field. And it was six runs. 
nicely pulled away by Pringle. That's a lovely shot. That's out to the fence for four runs. In the edge and wide of any slip fieldsman. Ken's across, can't stop it. So up comes the English 200 with that edge from Derek Pringle. He goes to 39, England 200 for nine. Is it uh, Tufnell's the tail ender? Pringle is able to play shots. He's fairly experienced, and Pringle's staying there with him. Uh, Tufnell's staying there with him. Grab ball, that's close. That's got six for Cairns. Pringle's out, and the innings is over. With Chris Cairns having the best figures of his test career. He's only had four matches, but now, after the last time he bowled in Auckland, he had five in an innings for the first time. Now he's got six in an innings for the first time, and Chris Cairns ends the England innings at 203. So England did well to go from 146 for seven overnight to be all out for 203. Derek Pringle, last man out, for the team's top score of 41. Looking now at the New Zealand bowling figures, headlined by Chris Cairns, best ever performance in Test cricket, six for 52, two wickets for Willie Watson, and one each for Danny Morrison and Murphy Sewer. Punch on the second day, they only had to face two overs, uh, both of them were maidens, and then it was Blair Hartland and John Wright to continue or restart the New Zealand innings uh, after lunch, and uh, let's go to the action now with the two New Zealand openers there, Hartland and Wright, facing up to De Freitas and Chris Lewis. No ball called, Lewis went a wee bit wide that time to try and change his angle, and it might have just tossed him a little off stride. So those are the first runs for New Zealand in their reply to England's 203. New Zealand are one. Ah! Oh, it's a close one and Hartland's gone. The first wicket's been taken with the ball cannoning into the pads of Blair Hartland. And I think Lewis knew all the time that Brian Aldridge's finger was going to go up. Hartland is the first New Zealand wicket to be taken by England. LBW to Lewis, and New Zealand are two for one with right on one. Well, this is plumb. Ball that just nips back a touch, keeps low, smacks into the back pad there, halfway up, and squares him up. They're all up, slips everybody, and so is the umpire. That's out. So New Zealand, in reply to England's 203, have lost their first wicket with two on the board. Very nasty, and by John Wright's immediate reaction, that really hurt. And uh, that bottom finger, because it gets jammed but with the ball hitting it on the handle. And although you've got a glove there, it uh, often sneaks up under it, doesn't it? Especially with that forefinger. It did look a very nasty one. Yes, uh, Jack Russell is signaling for someone to come on. Oh, goodness, yes. you could, it hurt me almost. It <laughs> beastly. The signal's gone out, so John Wright is leaving Eden Park, retiring hurt. That very nasty blow on the finger, and I think it's sensible because he's obviously struggling, and he'll have to have that uh, probably x-rayed and see what damage has been done. So bad luck for John Wright, bad luck for New Zealand, but uh, the captain, Martin Crowe, now coming to the wicket. Crossbow shot here from Crow, beautifully timed. This will be his first boundary of the day. Last shot from Martin Crow. Oh, he's gone for a big shot. And he's got it through the covers. It won't go all the way as Lewis from the gully is after it. And Martin Crow coming back for a third, and he makes it quite comfortably. Yes, Robin Smith took a little bit of, took got a hand on that one and prevented one run. Andrew Jones standing up off the back foot and cracking it down towards the number one stand, and it's gone all the way. So good shot by Andrew Jones. And cracks 
that one. And he's, and he's gone. Oh, it's in the air, and he's gone. Straight to Robin Smith at point. And Andrew Jones going for a big cut shot, didn't keep it down, and hit it out to Smith. And Smith took a very good catch. Well, that was travelling. He hit it hard. He didn't get right on top of it and uh, paid the penalty, just as John Wright might have done when substitute Neil Fairbrother dropped him on the last day in Christchurch. What a fine catch by Smith. So New Zealand, 35 for two. Good shot from Crow. Lovely shot. Timed beautifully. The gap found. 46 for two, and Martin Crow onto 18. A good shot this time from Rutherford. Lovely shot, short. He had to move away to the league side to give himself the space to do it, but he did it well. And he's gone for a big shot here, and that's a beauty through cover point that'll run away for four to the longest boundary on the path. Well, just a little short. It wasn't too short. Well, yeah. anyway, that's what Mark But that's shot. a good shot. And that's going away down through mid on. And that's four more. away by Ken Rutherford and that should go for four. Philip Tufnell, strange sort of slide out there but for no avail. Pro on 31 now. That's short, that's four. Way far too short and Pro cracks it away for four more. is over for 26 and New Zealand lose their third wicket at 91. Well, Ken Rutherford will feel that he's a bit unlucky here. He goes for the pull shot, it comes off the gloves. I'm pretty sure it just gets there and it loops gently to Jack Russell who takes a neat tumbling catch. So Rutherford departs for 26, New Zealand 91 for three. John Wright's coming back in at Eaton Park after the loss of Ken Rutherford's wicket. So Wright will start again on five, but here's the dismissal again. Yeah, you see from the other end, it sort of hits the glove. Nice, neat catch, no doubts about that. Just goes for the pull shot. Tucked up a little bit for room. See, one hand comes off the bat. He was just tucked up a bit. turn for three. spectacular way to bring up a hundred than a shot full of red-blooded aggression like that. Yes. Oh, it's carrying again. It might have gone all the way. Yes, Crow looks to see that it was caught and it was. He's walking. So a big breakthrough by Chris Lewis. Hick diving across at slip. Martin Crow knew the edge had been made. He looked to see whether it was caught. When he had that confirmed, he didn't wait for the umpire, he just took off. Looking at this, it was uh, rather a lazy shot, wasn't it? Um, good line, full of a length, just moved a little. Good catch. Good catch for a big man, he got right down, he just had a look at Stewart, said, was that caught? And then he was on his way. Crow knew, and bad luck for New Zealand, but a big blow for England. 
throw out for 45, 102 for four. So that ball from Lewis, which had Martin Crow out, has brought Deepak Patel out to the crease. It was the last ball of the over. And now De Freitas will bowl to John Wright. So Patel and Wright together. And after this, the scoreboard suggests that Cairns will come in next, then Perori, Morrison, Sewer, and Watson. An aggressive shot from John Wright, a lovely shot from Wright. And his first boundary. Dipak Patel turning that one very nicely square on the onside and it's running away for four. Timed it very well. Yeah. Patel goes for a big shot and gets it too. He hits it pretty cleanly down to long on. Well bowled Tufnell, says Jack Russell. Four, says the umpire. And Patel taking the attack to Philip Tufnell as he always will, I'm thinking. Yes, that one was up there. It wasn't the arm ball. Perhaps just drifting in, if anything, to middle and leg, and Patel could see that the mid-on was up, and it was only a matter of clearing him, and it was runs. Oh, he's bowled him. Right's gone. Pringle's got through, and the fifth wicket's fallen. So it's one, two, three, four, five, with John Wright beaten after a long innings that saw him so watchful in defence. But then he had one that just got through the gap. Pringle has the wicket. England are delighted. And a very valuable wicket for England. Go again. Just a little bit of movement into the batsman. Sneak between bat and pad. Kicked rather low, I thought. I don't think the ball uh, bounced that much. He might have grabbed it a wee bit, I think, with the bottom edge. But right's out for 15. One, two, three, for five. shot is going to be caught he is off smith out into the extra cover area there's appeal to the umpire the umpire said yes ken stays there he can't believe it but the way it looked as if it might have hit smith on the way through and then lobbed off his body somewhere off his boot perhaps as smith is indicating and it went through to hick at extra cover and was caught by that player there now Let's see if we can have a good, quick look at that, because that would be dreadfully bad luck. It is dreadfully bad luck for New Zealand. Have a look. Well, you can't tell quite from there, but Smith certainly gets out of the road quickly, and the ball just lobbed out to Hick. Hit him on the boot. You could see it, and then it flicked up. Now, the umpire had to decide whether the ball went from boot onto the ground, from the ground onto boot, or whether it went in the air from the bat to the boot and stayed in the air and was caught. The umpire saw it that way. Cairns is out for one. New Zealand in more trouble. 124 for six. Just one through. It's a short boundary out there. And it's going to go almost all the way. And the batsmen take two runs. Patel is sweeping very fine. Should get to the fence and does. Paul Walter Patel, he's gone to 16 now. Yes, it's a cute little shot. To, doesn't try to hit it too hard, just sweeps it in the proper manner, just helps it around, uses the pace of the ball just to paddle it around. Patel, oh, that's a lovely shot. Another boundary coming up. Patel in full flight again. There's a lovely long flowing back lift is Dipak Patel. Sweet shot this, timed it beautifully. Placement exquisite as it rushes away to the boundary. Patel 20, it's 135 for six. Deepak Patel or Philip Tuffle. Or <laughs> didn't play a shot, he's gone. <laughs> A 
Another LBW, Adam Brewery not playing a shot. He's out for a duck. 139 for seven. Well, if you don't play a shot, you're always liable to get given out. The ball coming back, not much doubt about that. Absolutely plumb, no shot played. Disappointment for Perori, New Zealand 139 for seven. So, Murphy Sewer to take his first ball in Test cricket. played back he gets close to the stumps does Chris Lewis he bowls very straight the line the length was good the ball just nipping back and I think if you see the replay here this looks fairly adjacent to me that looks plumb absolutely plumb Chris Lewis, he bowls very straight. So Lewis on the hat trick. Watson facing. So it was very much England's afternoon. New Zealand at one stage were 102 for two, but they collapsed. 141 for nine at stumps. Martin Crowe, the captain, top scoring with 45, and Ken Rutherford making 26. And looking at the England bowling figures, it was Chris Lewis who was the chief destroyer, four for 31, two wickets for Phil DeFreitas, and two also for Derek Pringle, one for Phil Tufnell. 52 runs, and here's...